peeps, in today's video we'll be setting up a rotary for our laser. We're going to be using this Ohmtech Polar Plus CO2 laser engraver. If you're interested in one of these, use our discount code PROJECT5 to get 5% off. Link in the description. So the Polar Plus comes with two rotaries depending on the diameter of your object that you're gonna be engraving, we'll have you choose which rotary you're gonna use. Now, because we're using a pretty small diameter, this is 55 millimeter glass cylinder, we're gonna go ahead and use the smaller one. What's really cool about these rotaries is there's little thumb screw adjustments to raise the bottom rollers in case you have cups are kind of trapezoidal so that this can adjust the height of the bottom rollers there. That's a pretty cool feature. So now we're gonna go ahead and plug the rotary into the machine. Okay, so here at the machine, it's very important you wanna make sure that you don't set up the rotary with the machine on. So make sure your machine is turned off before you set up your rotary. And the first thing that we're gonna do is remove our drawer and our honeycomb bed. Now we're gonna to want to slide this little tab holding the safety interlock closed because the machine will not fire unless these are pushed down because it's expecting the drawer to push it down. Just like that. So you're gonna to wanna to push your rotary all the way to this side and as far down as it will go. Now with this being kind of a radius, you can't push it all the way down, otherwise it's gonna get off there, but you just put it kind of like that and that'll work. Now I'm going to slide the gantry forward. In the back of the machine, there is a little cover over our rotary port. So we're going to remove the cover on the rotary port and plug in the rotary. Now we're going to flip this switch to rotary. So the gantry has alignment stickers to align based off of which rotary you're using. So we're using rotary two. So we're gonna use rotary two alignment to align to this tab right here. And that should roughly center us. Now I have noticed that since we are not all the way here at the bottom, I do need to push the rotary the same distance away that the rotary is away from the base. So just a little bit extra. And that will get us top dead center on our cylinder. If we were using rotary one on the other side of the gantry, we have the stickers for rotary one. Okay, so I'm turning the machine on now. Now the machine is gonna be doing its homing process right now. So we're gonna see these wheels turn on the rotary and they're not going to stop unless I hit the limit switch over here in this corner in order for it to complete its homing process. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that switch and then it's doing its fine adjustment. You can see it's still turning and it's gonna do this until I hit this switch again. Now it thinks that it's home. That's just one thing that you have to do that I would have thought that if you turn the rotary switch on, you wouldn't have to worry about the limit switch back there or the homing process would change somehow, but it doesn't. So now let's go ahead and get us configured in Lightburn and try to start uh, testing for engraving. All right, so we're here in Lightburn and we're gonna do some tests here before we do our engraving project. And we're gonna go ahead and configure our rotary. And this is our, our rotary configuration. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that open. And we are using a roller rotary and it is on the Y axis. Now the trick here is figuring out how many steps per rotation. We have previously found ours out here, but this defaulted to, I believe 500 and it was completely off but we'll show you from scratch here what it kind of looks like. So the first measure you wanna get with some calipers is measuring your roller diameter, which we've done at 0.85 inches. And then very important that you have your object diameter set. And we did measure ours at 2.2 and it automatically populated our circumference based off of that measurement. So what I do to test this out is I copy this number, Command C to copy, hit okay. And then I just draw a small rectangle and I put the height, command V, of that circumference. And what we're looking for is a light engraving of this rectangle where the line at the top 
and the line at the bottom are basically in complete alignment. And that is a perfect steps per rotation measurement. So that's what we're gonna use here first to make sure we're not gonna skew our design. And like I said, I, I changed that back to 500, so we're gonna see that we have some issues, but let's go ahead and test this out. Also to mention, when you're using the rotary, though it is possible for you to use absolute dimensions, it's much easier for you to just use current position, get the laser head where it is supposed to be on your design, and then just hit start and then it should go. Uh, from there. Just a, a little tip that seems to work for us. Also, another tip with this machine that you want to make sure you don't have enabled, I'll go ahead and show you here. Um, if you have this enable pointer offset enabled, the engraving will not work. So we found that the machine won't work with this activated. So make sure that this is off. And if your camera is configured appropriately, you shouldn't need this anyway. Okay, so in order to test, because I don't want to engrave on this before I test to make sure that we have everything correctly, I'm going to just engrave on some painter's tape. And we've done some testing on painter's tape to make sure that we're not gonna burn through the tape and ruin our cylinders. I also put some painter's tape here where the drive rollers are gonna be so that uh, there's a little bit more friction so it doesn't skip when it's turning on the rollers. Now I'm going to jog the machine over using the touch screen to get it positioned over our project. Now I'm gonna focus the machine. So you can see here that these lines, obviously it, it was supposed to go all the way around, which means our steps are too low. So now we're gonna go back into our rotary settings and increase the steps so these lines will match together. Okay, so I'm going back in my rotary settings and now I'm gonna increase, hit okay, and we'll see what it looks like when it goes too far. So now you can see where it went way too far. It went way past it. So we're gonna have to decrease the number of steps. All right, so back into my rotary settings, I'm gonna go ahead and put that closer to where I think it is. It's around 1600 for us. And let's do another test. So you can see our two lines here at the end of our rectangle are almost touching. So you can see we're really, really close. This honestly would be close enough to do our engraving project because what we're looking for is making sure that this dimension is showing correctly because otherwise your design will stretch or squish, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the value that I know that it is and get our design ready for engraving and stick this down. Go back into our rotary settings. Ours is kind of perfect at 1612. And then now we can finally get rid of our little test square. Change this back to a fill. I'm gonna to have to rotate my design 90 degrees because our cylinder is gonna be on its side. So now I can leave it right there just like that. And now I just, I'm gonna get my settings right.
The next class has a larger diameter than recommended for both of our rotaries, but it's closer to the recommended diameter of the rotary labeled one, so we'll switch over to that one. Okay, so here's a problem. This machine does cap out on the size of diameter of cylinders that you engrave. Specifically, you can't be thicker than, I believe it's 75 millimeters, which this is thicker than, which means we wouldn't be able to engrave because it doesn't clear the nozzle and head. But we have a little bit of a workaround here in that we built this table with a removable base here. And what we can do is drop this just a little bit in order to clear the head. Okay, so now with the bottom out of our little table and it propped up to the proper height, now we can see that we can clear right the nozzle head. So that's it. Pretty easy to set up and uh, get ready to go. Hardest part is figuring out the steps per rotation in Lightburn, but we showed you some tricks that we use to get that setting right. Both of these rotaries come with the Polar Plus, which is pretty cool. And obviously we got some pretty neat results. And once again, if you are interested in this machine, use our discount code PROJECT5, link in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it.